Hey guys, it's Jen with Card Zen by Jen, and I'm going to show you today how to make this adorable little um, treat package that holds a pack of gum. Um, I'm always looking for 3D projects, and I'm always looking for little gifts that I can give away to coworkers and friends, and I've been known to leave these with um, your monetary um tips with waitresses and waiters and you know I, I just like those little things that show a little bit of extra thank you to people um i picked up this bazooka bubble gum i saw this at the checkout at the grocery and i picked it up i have a friend who absolutely loves this gum when i'm not in my craft cave i manage a dental office i do not condone chewing bazooka bubble gum but she's also my co-worker she gets her dental work for free so um, she can do whatever she wants. <laughs> so let me show you real quick how to make this. This is absolutely adorable. So started off with the Glad We Are Friends and that is the Stampin' Up! stamp set. And it has this cute little corgi, it has a little guinea pig, has a cat. Um, so for all of your um, all of your pet lovers, you are gonna have you know something to use in here. I have a friend who has, I think, about a thousand guinea pigs. Um, so that was really what caught my eye the first time that I saw this. What we're gonna do, we're gonna start with a piece of crumb cake, a piece of sweet sorbet, and a scrap piece of thick, basic white cardstock. So we're gonna cut down our crumb cake let me pull up my cutter here. We are going to cut down the crumb cake to, oops, opened it the wrong way, of course. Oh, goodness. Does anybody else ever just have one of those days? I think I'm there. So our crumb cake is going to get cut down to eight and a half by three and a quarter. So we already know that this is eight and a half inches wide. So let's just turn it on its side and cut it to three and a quarter. So there's our first piece. While we have our cutter out, let's just go ahead and cut down our sweet sorbet to one inch by seven inches. So we'll do the one inch first. Turn that around. I'm sorry, seven and a half inches. One inch by seven and a half inches is what we are doing for the sweet sorbet. That's it, ladies. That's all of the cutting that we're doing today. So put that away. Well, I lied. It's not all of the cutting, <laughs> but it's all that we're doing right now. The next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna grab our scrap paper because we are going to stamp. This is my scrap paper, as you can tell. We are gonna stamp the I'm blown away by you all over the front and the back of this piece. Um, the only thing that you need to keep in mind is direction. So we're gonna take the I'm blown away by you stamp and we are gonna use the early espresso. Let's see what I did with the early espresso. There it is. Knew I'd find it here somewhere. All right, we're gonna grab our early espresso and we are going to willy-nilly, this is totally out of my um, normal. Usually I'm a very symmetrical person. I have to have everything like equal on both sides. Everything has to be centered. Um, but we are just going to willy-nilly all over the front and back. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is when you turn this over, when you turn this over, turn it so that you don't flip it upside down. You want all of your words going the same direction. Also keep in mind when you are stamping with early espresso, it is in darker ink. It does take it a little bit longer for it to dry. It does not dry instantaneously. There we go. All right, so we have all of that. Clean this off and give that just a second. 
And then we're gonna go back over and we're going to bring out our score and we are going to score that and do the rest of our cutting. So I'm gonna bring this out. I actually just recently invested in this. Um, for two years, I don't know why, for two years I did not buy one of these. I do a lot of 3D crafting, I love it. Um, and I was just using the score that's on my trimmer, my Stampin' Up! trimmer, and I didn't realize how much easier it is on this. Um, so if you do a lot of 3D crafting, I highly recommend this. So we are going to make our marks at the two and five eighths, which is right here. We're gonna come straight back. And then the three. And then the five and a half. And then the five and seven eighths. All right, so again, that was at the two and five eighths, three, five and a half, and five and seven eighths. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we are done with our score. So let's get rid of that. And we can get rid of that as well. Next thing that we are gonna do is we are gonna measure up on both sides. We are gonna measure up this is going to go one inch from the corner on both sides. Again, make sure that your paper is going the right direction. And line that up and just mark it with a pencil. No big deal. Line that up. This does not have to be exact by any means. If you're off a little bit, it will not matter. It just gives you an idea. So then we're gonna pull our trimmer back out. And we are gonna use our Stampin' Up! trimmer. Now we made two, see if I can show these here to you. We made two marks. We did that first one at two and five eighths and then the next one at three. We are gonna go from the outermost mark on each side, and we are going to cut from that outermost mark down to your one inch mark, from here to here where my fingers are. So when you put this on your trimmer, you just need to line up your pencil mark, line up your top score. Oops, I moved that just slightly. It happens. There we go. Always remember that it is just paper. Mistakes will happen. I make them all the time. It's okay, it's just paper. So now we're gonna line this side up too. Most of the time when I make a mistake, that's where I put an embellishment. So now you're onto my secret. All right, there we go. So now we are going to take, we're done with this, so now we're going to take our bone folder and we are going to burnish at our score marks here. If I can see them, oh my goodness. I think my eyes are getting bad. There we go. And we're going to burnish on both sides. There you go. So now you have your packaging made and you can see I'm blown away is on the outside and it's on the inside. Perfect. Next thing that we're going to do is we are going to take our belly band. This is going to be our belly band. Again, this was one inch high, seven and a half inches wide. And we are not going to score this. All we need to do with the belly band is break the fibers. So take your bone folder or anything else that you have that's hard and just run it through 
on both sides, break up those fibers. That will make it so much easier for you to wrap it around and adhere it where it needs to be. So let's bring our pack of bazooka in. And we are going to put that right here. If you need to give that bazooka a little bit more stability, what I typically do at the end is I will add a little adhesive to the back of it and put it down where I want it. There we go. There we go. Put it down where I want it so that it doesn't slide out. So there we go. We wrap, we wrap. Take your belly band, go right around. This is a really easy project for children to do. Um, so when it comes time for Valentine's, I would not suggest that you give them bazooka, please. But maybe something else, maybe some orbits or something of that nature. Oops, that's not the right one. So for this, I'm gonna apply some adhesive. I wanna use my Stamp and Seal Plus for this because it has to be stronger than regular adhesive. So we're gonna do our Stamp and Seal Plus. We are gonna wrap that around, push down, perfect. It's not completely perfect, but that's okay. That's gonna get hidden. That is not a problem whatsoever. All right, so now the next thing that we're gonna do is, set this aside for a second, we are gonna take our thick basic white scrap we are going to grab our Tuxedo Black Memento. We are going to grab our cute little corgi with the fan. It is right here, the cute little corgi and the fan. We are going to grab that, grab one of my blocks, and we are just going to ink that up good, and we are going to stamp that on our scrap paper. Voila, doesn't get any easier than that. So now the last thing that we need to do is we need to color him in our fan and then we just need to fussy cut him out. And I am not a fan of fussy cutting. So anybody who knows me knows that I absolutely hate fussy cutting, but sometimes it's necessary. And this is one of those times where it's necessary. So coloring my fan, I am using the Stampin' Blends, I'm gonna use the gray granite. I'm gonna use the dark first, and we're just gonna create some shadowing here over on this left-hand side. I am not great at coloring. I am not going to pretend to be great at coloring. It is not my forte. But I love how forgiving the Stampin' Blends are. Then we're gonna grab our light gray granite and we're gonna fill in. Just go right over top, fill in. The Stampin' Blends are alcohol-based. They are meant to be layered. There you go. So there is that. Now for our Corgi, I picked a color that is actually from, I don't even know what they call them. Um, I, they're the Flesh Tones. Stampin' Up! came out with a bunch of colors that are all considered to be flesh tones. Um, and I find that I use them for actually a lot more than just flesh tones. I use them for hair coloring. I use them for dog fur, cat fur. Um, I use them for a lot of stuff. Not just the flesh tones, but the particular one that I'm using for the Corgi is the SU600. Again, I'm not even gonna to pretend to be great at coloring, but this really does make it easy. So we're gonna color him in. It is a little bit harder to color whenever you have a camera above your head, that's for sure. All right, so. The nice other thing about the um, the stamp and blends is that you aren't gonna see stroke lines. 
and I love that. I cannot stand stroke lines. Maybe that's why I didn't like coloring when I was little. I couldn't handle the stroke lines. All right, so I'm gonna give him just a second, and then I'm actually gonna go back in, and I'm gonna add a little bit more with the same color on just this left side. Remember we did the left side on the fan? We're gonna do the left side on the dog too. So just on that left side, we are going to give another layer and just make that just a little bit darker, just to give some dimension. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. All right, now, for coloring his ears, I am using a Stampin' Right. I don't have the petal pink in the in the um, Stampin' Blends, contrary to my husband's belief. I don't own everything that Stampin' Up! sells. Um, although you would think, based upon my credit card bill, that I did. But I am putting a little bit of petal pink. Use whatever you have. If you have the ivory, um, or if you have even just the lighter of the crumb cake, that would work in there as well. I used, again, from that, um, from the flesh tones, I'm using the SU-1000. This has a very pink hue to it, and I'm using that for his tongue. There we go. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm pulling in the colors of the bazooka packaging. Um, so I'm pulling in the colors of the bazooka packaging and I want to make the air lines, the action lines. We are going to make those a light night of navy. Just a light night of navy. Just go along those just like that. And then for the banners that are coming off of the fan, I never understood why people put banners coming off of their fan. Actually, that's really small, so I'm going to use my smaller end. There we go. There we are. So now we are done with our coloring. I think we have everything. I think we have everything. So we're done with our coloring. Let's go ahead and fussy cut this out. Again, not a fan of fussy cutting, but there are times where it is necessary and this is one of those times. So we're just gonna, we're not gonna do exact. We're just gonna allow a little bit of a white edge around around here. These are going to be great for, I do a lot of craft fairs, um, and people really like those easy little thank yous um, that they can give out to people, give to co-workers, give to their mailman, um, give to the bus driver, all kinds of just easy stuff. They seem to really like those. So if you do craft fairs, I would say this might be a really easy one for you to do. Um, and all you really have is the cost of the, the gum. If you can get that gum at a discounted price, sometimes buying in bulk gets that for you. All right. Round off that edge there. All right. So we have our Corgi and his fan all cut out. Let's get rid of our scrap. And the last thing that we are gonna do is we are going to take our Stamp and Seal Plus again, and we are gonna come right across the front of that. Oops. Press down, rip off, and we are going to adhere him right to the front. Press down good, make sure it's nice and sealed. All right. So there you go, guys, as easy as that. So they'll get that as a gift from you. Open it up, nothing else necessary. There you go. 
I will have all of the dimensions and such in my website um, in the post for this. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, my stamping group is Stamping with Card Zen by Jen. Um, you can find items for sale, my made items for sale at Card Zen by Jen on uh, Facebook page. You can find my tutorials at cardzenbyjen.com online. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm always happy to answer any questions. If you get a different type of gum and you would like me to help work out the dimensions for the gum, um, for your packaging, please just reach out. I'm happy to do the math for you and get that worked out for you. Hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy. Thank you.